Investing time and effort to set these parameters accurately will pay off sonically. The results will not be subtle. If you have tried adjusting these parameters by eye, you know how difficult and tedious this can become. And in the end, you are never entirely sure if the settings are bang on. Before we set these parameters, there is one parameter that is more important, in my opinion. You have to make sure the turntable is level. Even if your turntable does not have VTA and azimuth adjustments, just leveling your turntable platter will let gravity work in applying even downward force from the needle to the record groove. After you have leveled the platter, try the marble or ball bearing test. Place some on the platter and see if they roll off. Azimuth is the angle of the needle to the record surface when looking at the cartridge from the front. It should be perpendicular to the record surface. If the azimuth of the needle is slightly off from vertical, the needle will track one side of the groove more than the other. As a result, the sound from one channel will be louder than the other. This Nasotech tool was created by some clever folks in Korea to help align azimuth and VTA on turntables. It's a clear acrylic block, 63 millimeters wide, by 43 millimeters high by 7 millimeters thick. To set azimuth, place the block in front of the cartridge as the needle is resting on a record. Adjust the head shell until it's perfectly parallel to one of the lines on the block. Some tone arms will have a set screw where the head shell connects to the arm tube to allow for this adjustment. Others have a set screw near the tone arm pivots. For this turntable, with its unipivot tone arm, the head shell angle is adjusted by twisting the counterweight counterclockwise or clockwise in small increments. Vertical tracking angle, or more correctly, the stylus rake angle, is the offset angle from vertical of the stylus when looking at the cartridge from the side. This angle is around 20 degrees and is intended to mirror the angle of the cutting head used to create the master disc. If the VTA is slightly off, two things may happen. A positive VTA, where the rear of the tone arm is slightly higher than the front, will emphasize higher frequencies. A negative VTA, where the front of the tone arm is higher than the rear, will emphasize bass frequencies. But unless you are familiar with a piece of music, you may not notice the divergence from what the recording engineer wanted you to hear. To set VTA, place the alignment block to the side of the cartridge. Raise or lower the tone arm until the top of the head shell is perfectly parallel to one of the lines on the block. On some turntables, you can raise or lower the tone arm base using shims. On others, there may be a set screw that allows the base column to be raised or lowered. All LP records are the same diameter, namely 12 inches or 11 and 7 8 inch to be precise. A heavier record will therefore be thicker. Using a kitchen scale and a sample of records, I found weights ranging from 109 to 153 gram. Using a digital micrometer, the thicknesses range from 1.6 to 1.9 millimeter. For new 180 and 200 gram records, weights range from 183 to 197 gram and thicknesses from 2.3 to 2.5 millimeter. This means if VTA is set to thinner records, VTA will be slightly off when playing thicker records. This photo shows a slightly negative VTA for a 200 gram reissue of a 1955 Helen Merrill recording. It is also possible to set azimuth using electronic tools which measure the left and right channel signal voltages of a cartridge. A cartridge with perfect azimuth will output the same signal voltage on both channels when playing a stereo test tone. A simple but perhaps less accurate way to determine if signal voltages are identical is to measure the sound level at each speaker when playing a test tone on the left and right channels. 
because the cartridge signal passes through the entire audio system chain, it may be affected by any volume imbalances caused by downstream components. To do this test, you will need a test record that contains test tones and a smartphone with a sound level meter app. If the readings are within 1 dB, that's a pretty good indication that azimuth alignment is very good. Balance test. Adjust the balance control until the notes are equally loud from each loudspeaker. One last thing is to check that the stylus force is still correctly set. Once azimuth and VTA have been set accurately, you should be able to hear more detail and clarity. Perhaps the singer is no longer slurring the words to a song. His or her diction is so good you can hear every word. You can hear and locate background singers and instruments. It's analogous to looking through a camera lens that was previously slightly out of focus but has just come into focus.